Hey guys, welcome out to the shop. Last week, or last video I should say, we went ahead and repaired this ton plane right here made by M. Copeland. And I figured we'd stick on some of the planes I have on top of my shelf right here. And we're gonna start restoring this grooving plane. And this one is uh, number 95 by oh, the Ohio Tool Company. Uh, it's not in bad condition. It's got a little crack in the front. But all of the threads are there and in good condition, but most of the metal is all rusted like most of the things on these planes. So we're going to go ahead and break it down, get it cleaned up, and get it back into a user state. Too big. Mm. So it's been about 24 hours since I put this all in here. The iron wasn't able to fit all the way into the water, so we're gonna have to work on that. But as you can see, even some of the rust has started coming off the bottom. The depth gauge looks pretty good. And I gotta take all this and go take it out and get rinsed off. The skates look good. You guys can see all the rust kind of running down there. Put that there. And I think I have two screws or a couple of screws maybe in here. Two screws right there. So we're gonna take all that and go get it rinsed off real quick. And then we'll see what they all look like. So we're back from getting the parts rinsed off. Here is the depth stop. So that looks really good. I'll probably just make sure that it's dry and then throw some rust preventative on there and just leave it how that is. This skate needs to be cleaned up a little bit more. Right here there's a little bit of rust. <clears throat> but for the most part it's clean. 
this one too is kind of like they were almost in the exact same spot no they weren't they were on opposite sides I guess for the rust but regardless I mean that they, they clean up very well with just like that vapor rust stuff and you don't spend any time on it you just kind of put it in there and wait and then even the iron some of it cleaned up from where I splashed the stuff on it So now that we've gotten all the metal cleaned up, we're gonna go ahead and start working on the actual wooden parts. Uh, I've got a, just like a scrubbing pad and some turpentine boiled linseed oil mix. And uh, I've done this in many videos. You guys know how this works. If you guys have watched my videos before, pretty much just put it on, scrub it, and it doesn't take everything away. It takes a lot of the dirt and the grime off of it cleans it up makes it look nice again gives it a little bit of life back and so we'll just work on this and the one area that I'm not going to be putting this on is going to be the threads or trying to get it inside this I'm, I'm going to do the outside but not the uh, the inside so we're just going to scrub on this a little bit look at that grain really popping now and we'll get uh, some paper towels and get this wiped down so right here is a good example of how dirty this is i mean that's it, it looks pretty just grimy and here is the plain body after it has had all of its treatment done to it so it's still got that dark look to it but it looks clean and so we're going to go ahead and just run over this whole section as well just scrubbing everything cleaning it up and then we're going to eventually get over to where we're going to be doing the wax so i've let most of this stuff dry for about 30 minutes and like always i've got this uh boil linseed oil beeswax and turpentine mix right here and i'm just going to grab some onto my fingers and i'm just going to go and apply it all over the uh the plain body i've already done the threads and the spindles because i didn't clean those so i didn't have to let any of that dry and the best way that i did that was actually lathering the uh the threads with the the wax mixture and running the the nuts back and forth over top of it and actually letting the wax get in all the threads and there's going to be a little bit of wax left over on there but i don't care it's all right so i'm just rubbing all this in making sure that it gets in all the cracks and then i'm just going to take a paper towel and buff this is just a primary buffing on this i'm going to be coming back with another one and doing it a second time as well because this will still leave a little bit of residue all right guys so i went ahead and got the plane all put back together and we've gotten all of the uh, wax applied so that everything turns nice and smooth and everything slides in and out as it's supposed to there's this one spot right here that's still a little dark but i couldn't get that off i didn't really want to grind on it that much so i just left that but everything else looks great the depth stop works perfect and here is the wedge um, put wax up on this part nothing on this lower half and now we need to move on to the iron so what i'll do is i'll flatten out this as much as possible real quick and then i'll go over this i got most of the rust off uh the iron is still actually pretty sharp so i'm probably just gonna put it on the uh 3000 grit whetstone and then hone it and see if we can get it sharp enough that way 
we're just gonna flatten out this backside real quick. And then we're gonna actually move on to the bevel. All right guys, well, I finished up the iron. Uh, it's still a little bit pitted on this backside, but I got the face all cleaned up and threw it on the leather. And uh, it looks great. So now we're gonna go ahead and get it inserted into the actual plane and uh, just test it out, see how it does, see if there's anything else that we need to do to it. Now let me take a little bit lighter of a pass. All right, so now we're taking still somewhat heavy cuts, but it's actually in the direction of the grain now, and I'm not fighting through knots. There we go. Now we're on the depth stop. You can see that made a uh, pretty deep groove right in there. All right guys, so the Ohio Tools number 95 is finally finished up. Um, it took a little bit to get the iron sharpened more than I expected because it had so much pitting on it, especially on that backside, but it is sharp now. And I mean, it's cutting pretty good. It's got some, it's taking off really heavy shavings and get right through that wood when I need it to. So it's ready to be back into use and I can put it up here on the shelf. But one last look, this is the Ohio Tools number 95. I'm happy with it and we'll put it back up here. And the next project that we're gonna be doing is making a sticking board so we can start working on making different kinds of moldings with some of the hand planes. I got a couple hollow and rounds coming in. Some that are actually match sets, so I'm excited about that. But we'll actually start using hollow and rounds and rabbit planes to get some molding made up here in the next few videos, so stay tuned for that. If you guys enjoyed the video today, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment down below. And if you are new, welcome to the channel. Hit that subscribe button and check out all my other videos.